find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios, ready to rock with the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 76. I'm a video producer here in the area, working with some companies like IWC, RWA, and so whatever Joe Nebraska tosses my way. Some guy named Virgil lately? I, I don't know what, we'll, we'll find out about that in a few weeks. But anyways, with me on the line, as usual, my co-host, my partner in crime and indie wrestling, representing Hold It Down in Corpus Christi, Texas, for the Inspire Professional Wrestling Organization. Um, no longer NWA affiliated, as as I understand it, as the big news this week. Maybe we'll talk about. It. Maybe we won't. I don't know. That I don't know how he news. feels about oh, it. Yeah. I don't know how he feels about it. But uh, Eamon, <laughs> Eamon joins us. Eamon, you please on the Twitter. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Zorg. Uh, ready once again to talk about indie wrestling. Very excited for this interview this week. Uh, Excellent. This has been a long-awaited one. So, I can't uh, wait. I'm looking at the list of credentials for this fellow, and um, I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited for this one. Uh, because I know this is something that we talked about like maybe even a couple years ago, uh, uh, some of these items here. But anyways, uh, if you want to find out more of Indie Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show, so many of these productions that we're doing around here, go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can check out all the shows that we're doing, find out how to describe to them individually or as a bundle in some cases, on uh, all your podcasters and YouTube's video and audio formats, wherever you want to check that stuff out. And, of course, you can uh, check us out and, and, and communicate with us and tell us who do you think we, we should be talking with or if we've announced uh, uh, who's coming up on the show, you can you can submit questions for them. 412-206-WMS0 is the, um, is the hotline that you can leave a message on or goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com. Big thanks, of course, to Basic Sickness for our intro and outro music. Check them out at basicsickness.com. I understand there might be some new music coming very soon from him in the next couple months. So go there and, and make sure you keep checking back and follow him on the Twitters and everything as well. Uh, so with that, let's get into it. Eamon, uh, you got somebody special here with us this week, right? Absolutely. This is, like I said, this is a guest I've wanted to get on for a good while now. Uh, very excited to have him on. Uh, we ha- we talked to normally wrestlers on this show, uh, but we're actually getting the chance to talk uh, to uh, the self-professed future professional wrestling manager of the decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also uh, owns and operates two improv comedy theaters in Austin and New Orleans called the New Movement Comedy uh, Theaters. Uh, he also has a movie coming out very soon called Air Sex the Movie, or I believe it may be out in some forms. I, I I have to. Well, we'll ask him about that. Uh, it's none other than uh, Mr. Chris True dot Biz. Chris, how are you this evening? Hey, everybody! I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for all your sweet, kind words. Let's focus up and get the interview started, right? Definitely, always focusing up here. Uh, very excited to talk to you. Uh, Uh, As we kind of always talk with people on this show, uh, everyone, I guess, kind of gets into wrestling for one reason or the other. Uh, So as sort of a way to start this off, uh, what's your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Oh, my first professional wrestling memory is actually a good one in my world. So it was WrestleMania 6. I was an Ultimate Warrior kid growing up. You couldn't you couldn't shake me from that. I was warrior all the way. Like like most kids my age that were warrior fans, I had the face paint and the and the arm bands, right? And it was WrestleMania six. My rich neighbor Jeff Cody, he had ordered WrestleMania six, the pay per view. He was rich; they could do that kind of thing. <laughs> and he got to a fight, and he made me leave as the main event was starting. Oh God! Then ending though, it's a happy ending. I got to. I, I called him about you know, 15 minutes later or whatever, begged him, ran back to his house, and I saw the finish. I, saw, I walked in and saw Warrior you know, roll out of the leg drop and then hit that big splash, and my childhood heart exploded. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice, it was a nice moment, uh, definitely. Um, so going into, uh, obviously, a lot of people know you for your work in, in the improv comedy world. Uh, uh, how did you get your start with there and, and – um, uh, in you know to where you are now owning two uh, owning two comedy theaters so it's actually 10 years ago right now 10 years ago right now i i start i got real serious about pursuing comedy and so you know like a lot of wrestlers do when they get serious about pursuing their craft you have to you have to make adjustments you have to make some sacrifices you have to 
you know, in my case, I became a minimalist pretty much. I sold my car and quit all my jobs and just said, I got to make this work. And eventually it got to a place where I felt like I wanted to, I wanted to book my own shows and I wanted to run my own company and I wanted to call my own shots. So again, much like professional wrestling in many ways, I just opened up my own comedy theater and luckily Luckily, it worked, and the, the staff and people that we have as part of the new movement all are stellar human beings who who deserve to be put over in every single medium possible. They're amazing, and these theaters are beautiful, and it just feels good. Awesome, definitely. Uh, going Not to jump too ahead, too ahead of your time in wrestling, but do you think your background in improv comedy, because uh, one of the discussion points we always kind of have is like, how sometimes you know people theorize that wrestlers should take like an acting class or a or a comedy class in some cases. Uh, how that would improve their their abilities. Do you think that that's the case? Do you think that with your background, it kind of helps you in that field as well? Absolutely. I think that I had a leg up, you know, when I first got involved with pro wrestling because I understood I understood things like crowd control. I understood how to act backstage at a show. I understood how uh, I understood how to treat how to treat people the way I wanted to be treated, and how to listen, and also just a desire to get better. As you know, to, to always be improving, to always be a student, and those things that definitely apply to a wrestling locker room. And also, my business background certainly applied to 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 me in, in in professional wrestling because I quickly discovered that you know I wanted if I wanted to make something happen, I had to pay it my own way. So instead of hoping that some wrestlers would want me to uh, you know, it would want to work with me. I went out and I scooped them up myself. Absolutely, definitely. So you started managing in professional wrestling about 2011, I want to say. Um, uh, how did that come about, and and, and uh, how did that feel to finally go into that into that realm of professional wrestling? It felt great because it, I felt like it was a long time coming. It was one of those things that it was one of those things that I could not figure out how to get involved and how to be a part of. And I and it was at a music festival, an outdoor music comedy festival here in Austin, Texas, called Fun 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 Fest. And it and there was a wrestling happening there. I was doing comedy at the same time, and those worlds just started combining and they merged together. And I was given an opportunity, and I haven't looked back since then. And it's and I've been working very hard to maintain maintain status in both the comedy and wrestling communities and merging those worlds together wherever I can. Absolutely. Do you, and we kind of talked about the similarities between the two, uh, wrestling and comedy world. Did you notice any stark differences when it came, when you first got into professional wrestling about the wrestling business in general? Well, there's actually there's so many similarities between comedy and wrestling. You know, everything from booking the order of the lineup to who's headlining to who gets an opportunity. You know, someone big is coming from out of town. Who's going to get the opportunity to work with this person, whether it's in the ring or opening for them on a comedy stage. There are so many similarities, but at its core, as long as you treat people the way you want to be treated, as long as you stay focused, as long as you, as long as you are a good person and work hard and outwork everyone else, then you should be fine. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, you also, uh, into a different realm, kind of semi comedy realm, it's comedy slash sports realm, uh, with, uh, your role, uh, in the, uh, air sex world championships. Now, uh, I know that, you know, you've been on America's got talent doing, uh, performing air sex, uh, uh, getting called, what is it? Crass or whatever by Howard Stern, which I mean, it's kind of the dream. Um, and, and I know you got a movie coming out, uh, documenting uh, the whole air sex uh, uh, phenomenon uh, as you have it right there. <laughs> Hold up. You know I came prepared. You know I have a bunch. I got the DVD right here, and of course that's available right now on airsexworld.com. But yeah, air sex is the greatest sporting spectacle in the world. So how did, not to, not to spoil too much of what may be in the movie, but uh, how did you get involved with that? Uh, uh, so it started off as like a small idea, uh, like a parody of an air guitar show, and it just grew from there. It just snowballed. It was, it was like let's do this one show this one time. That sounds like it might be fun, and then it did really well. And then naturally, because because we saw an opportunity to grow a project, we were like, let's ride this thing. Let's see how it goes. And it has now grown into part, you know. Part comedy show, part WrestleMania, 
hard sex, all <laughs> all fun. Absolutely. If you, if anyone listening has never been to an air sex uh, uh, event, it is it's truly something special. Uh, uh, the, it's more than just any like comedic show, I guess you could say. It's there's there's a lot of different aspects that seem to go into it. Absolutely, and I'd like to apologize for that crazy noise that happened behind me just now. We all did a very good job of staying focused. We didn't go off track. We all <laughs> stayed true to our hearts and the task at hand. You kept asking the questions. I kept answering the questions. This is a home run team. Absolutely, I love I love the way this is working. Um, so, going into back to some of your manager stuff. Uh, in Inspire Pro Wrestling, obviously, you're a part of the new movement, uh, aptly named. Uh, and we've had most of the members of the new movement on this show at, at one point in time or, or, or another. Uh, and obviously, you've been growing a bit more success in Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, inquiring some championships like the Pure Prestige title uh, as of recent. Uh, what, what's been it like, you know, managing the new movement? It's been a lot of fun. It's been a challenge. It's, you know, but... Anything worth doing is not going to be super easy, right? So we're not having to manage these personalities, you know, both in the ring and outside the ring. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I truly believe that we are building to something that is, that I don't use the word lightly, that is truly epic. And when you look at the makeup of the people that we have as part of the new movement, you can see that, that my guys, my girl, we are... We are the strange combination of, of just spontaneous joy, of rock hard muscle, of insane talent, and just we're so close. We just we're just missing a little bitty bit of teamwork, but I've got to give a shout out to Gigolo James Johnson, who a few months ago started showing me the ways of teamwork a little bit more and you know, I'm not too proud to say that I that I'm not also currently a student. I will. I'm a teacher. I am a student. I will always be those things. I can continue to grow, and I have grown quite a bit this past couple of months. I've learned a ton, and I just feel that, you know, it's a long-winded answer. But the question you asked fired me up and got me excited. So I had to. So I had to go big with my answer. But I love the new movement. I love my team, and I'm just so excited for the next. For every show that's coming up, I'm so excited. I'm excited to the team. I'm excited. You know, we typically have weekly meetings where we go over goals and they make fun of me for, you know, that, that I'm too goal oriented or that I want to talk too much. But but I think it improves. I think it definitely improves. Uh, Keith Lee usually shows up to the meetings. I'm uh, drenched in sweat because the man's always working out. But Delilah Doom is, is, if she's not shopping, she's training. So I feel good about us. I feel good about our direction. Absolutely. Um, going into some of our, our, our what's become our regular questions here on the show, uh, to, uh, for either studying purposes or recreation, what are you watching currently when it comes to wrestling? Is there anything you kind of have your eyes on uh, uh, as of late? You mean in a general sense or specifically with my crew? Uh, in your crew or in a general sense, anything you may be looking for, you know, inspiration, I guess. I understand what you're saying now. Yes, uh, apologies. I'm always looking for uh, for a tremendous amount of showmanship and just and polish. I'm all about polish. About every month, I have a new word that I try to filter all of my dealings through that word. This past month is the last day of the month, so it's a great time to reflect on this word. The word is polish. How polished can I be as a manager? How polished can my squad be? And also when I'm watching wrestling, when I'm just enjoying it, other companies or when I'm watching on television, you know, how polished are these performers? How polished are these concepts? And I think the more polished it is, the more it begins to tip in the direction of this is really high quality stuff. Absolutely. Uh, and, and sort of a, a closing out question, and, and uh, all of our guests on the show tend to take it in various different ways, so feel free uh, to take it in any direction you wish. But uh, in your opinion, what is the best thing about independent wrestling and the worst thing about independent wrestling? So I think, I think the worst thing about independent wrestling is the, is the lack of control some people can have on the microphone the lack of timing, and guess what, people? I can change this. I can help you out. Take an improv class. Learn the art of timing. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to yes and in life and in the ring. 
I think that when indie wrestlers, uh, a lot of indie wrestlers aren't, don't respect the art form uh, on the microphone. Not saying anything about their in-ring stuff, but like on the microphone, a lot of people just think you just get on the microphone and you just you just say mean, nasty things. You just insult one person. It's like, guess what? That one, there's 500 people here. That one person who yelled something that you didn't like. If you're going at them, you are turning your back on 499 other people. So That's a good point. stay focused. Stay focused and don't worry about that one person. Unless you want to turn that one person into many, and that's the wrong kind of that's the wrong kind of reaction. Now, the best thing going in indie wrestling, I think, is just the camaraderie right now of the camaraderie of of the locker rooms. I think that there's it's not always it's not always the best thing in the world. It's, it's not picture perfect. It's not 100 percent awesome. But I think when it's on, it's on the back having that some of these wrestlers have for each other. It's the bonds. I think that that's a really special thing. Something that we see oftentimes in, in our comedy theaters when we're doing it right is the way people just take care of each other. You know, you make a mistake on stage, we'll turn your mistake into something beautiful. I think that same thing happens in the ring between people who have special relationships. Additionally, can we also ask what is the best and worst thing about the Air Sex Championships participating? <laughs> sure. So the best thing about the Air Sex Championships is those moments when someone who thought that they couldn't do it, they thought they was they were too embarrassed, they were too shy, they thought it was not right to put to put sex in that context on stage in front of a bunch of people. They were very bashful. When that person breaks through and they have their moment and the crowd's chanting their name and they and they win that night, or at least they do very well, something very special. And powerful about that moment about desensitizing yourself to sex, which is a very important part of everyone's life, and just and just having some fun with it. Now, the worst thing about air sex is when there's a couple of bad things, a couple of worst things, a couple <laughs> of worst of ever things. Um, when people when people don't do the don't take the show concept the way it's meant to be, like a little bit. A little bit slightly serious, but a little bit way sillier than serious. People are trying to be sexy. That's always bad. Or people do awful, dirty, nasty things. Dirty and nasty is good. They do awful things because they think it's funny. That's usually a huge bummer. That's why I'm there on the microphone, ready to pick up the pieces and turn their mistakes into something beautiful. Absolutely. It's, it. it's a very, it's a great, uh, uh, not a kind of a people watching experiment to see what people use with that opportunity uh, uh and see what they what they try um so yeah that, absolutely i love it uh, i love it and i i'm i'm very excited for uh, uh what's to come with that as well uh so thank you very much chris for uh coming on uh if you have any upcoming events uh, you'll be on or any you know things where people can check you out obviously you're on more than just pro wrestling shows um uh feel free to plug away Sure. Well, if you're in the Austin, Texas, or New Orleans area, then you should check out the new movement. We do comedy seven days a week. We're celebrating our six-year anniversary this week in Austin and next week in New Orleans. And also, pick up the movie, Air Sex the Movie. It's a ton of fun. If you go to airsexworld.com, you'll be able to find more information there. You can follow me on Twitter at Chris True. And, of course, as always, focus up and support indie wrestling. I like it. I like it. Very, very convenient with this show, actually. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Chris. And it's time for me and Sorg to dive into some of the stuff happening in this week in Indie Wrestling. He's going to join me on camera A. Uh, Your mind will be blown. He's so. coming over here. We got the MacBook. We're going to try not to drop it. So so it feels like I'm pushing a button. Now push down even harder. You had a good time with uh, with Mr. Seaback. Chase rats around in the corner. He'd point out and he'd uh, give the Latin Latin time for the rats. I learned that the uh, the race for father of the year <laughs> is as wide open as ever. Uh, you know, Kevin Owens, sure. King Carino, sure. Papa Frisco, Papa Lethal. <laughs> I mean, the quality parenting going on in professional wrestling these days. Oh, they were oh I've never had a game crash second. on me before. Jeez. It deleted the game, so... <laughs>
Oh, oh, okay, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. I've had an Xbox freeze, but I didn't have an Xbox to then recursively destroy everything destroy on the hard drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try, let's try to see a rock some Mandarin on Kevin Owens. That, that, uh, that was pretty messed up. That like John Cena like turned into a porn heel in the middle of his uh, promo. Uh... <laughs> Where did he become La Resistance? What's happening? <laughs> oh what? my god! You know, if you don't reach out, it's it's not cool to be the wallflower talking to the people you're comfortable with. I talked about earlier on Wrestling Mayhem Show about, hey, this is the guy that I run into at all the networking events, and at least like, ah, other tall guy that knows wrestling. I'm going to go talk to him first, and we'll see what happens from there. Inside the box, we have uh, our own software that, 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 and, and circuitry that makes it possible to take input from all sorts of devices, whether it's joysticks, like the flight joystick we had just there for a demo, a uh, wheelchair joystick that you use for a powered wheelchair. Are you aware and, and have you seen or experienced the uh, Jimmy Wang Yang's redneck party bus that I hear so much about? I, I am, and there's also a princess bus. Um, I mean, I haven't partied on the party bus okay. myself. <laughs> Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24 hour game thon for youth arts programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium, or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start. And that was a little uh, something extra. A little something extra there. Uh, this week in Sorgatron Media, little clips of what's going on. Awesome cast, boss battle, so much other stuff that we have here at SorgatronMedia.com. I want to kind of give you just a, a peek into what else. If, if you happen to be listening to Just Indie Mayhem Show, Just the Wrestling Shows, we do so much more. And uh, I want to expose you to that here a little bit each week. And uh, let us know what you think about those and if you've uh, checked out any of the new shows. So uh, we mentioned the top of the show um, and we were, we were kind of having a side discussion here as well, uh, off air. Uh, so officially, uh, Inspire Pros left the National Wrestling Alliance, and uh, yes. and for for reasons, you know, whatever business reasons, it doesn't have to be aired. You know, that, that it's nothing yeah. really has to I get mean, into that. The, I'll, I'll say this: uh, we we joined them about a year ago. Mm-hmm. So basically, our con- in in the end terms, our contract was up at this point, and. Uh, you know, we uh, we uh, did it happen to renew. So um, uh, and it, yeah, and and that's one of those things where you're like, well, does this help us or versus does it? I don't think Inspire needs anybody for one thing. You yeah, guys, I think you guys think, are on a roll, right? I, I think we we were very not smart in a sense, but we were still Inspire Pro Wrestling when we joined the NWA. We didn't have to change, you know. So so because this is happening, it's not like we're rebranding ourselves or we're not, you know, we're just going on, you know, and and you know. Um, yeah, it, it was, like I said, it was a very amicable thing and we, you know, we support the NWA and all of them for, uh, for everything they've done for us. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, you know, we, we move forward is the big thing, you know, we just wanted, I think the big thing with the announcement was just letting fans know like, Hey, this is happening. So. Right. Right. So, but the bigger thing was you said that you were surprised at the reaction to the announcement or thing because yeah. you guys are at this point where you're like this this is nothing there's no, nothing important is happening here when we announce this we're just stating it for the record right yeah like, i think i mean i don't want to say necessarily nothing important uh but like in the case of like we just wanted to let people know like we wanted to inform our fans and be like hey this is what's happening you know this is just how it is going forward uh, i think it's important to kind of be honest with your fan base uh, and not try to hide things like that or anything. Um, but yeah, the response was like, I don't know. People really like, I don't know if people treated it as a big, like they treated it. I feel like a bigger deal than it was. Like I, I saw a lot of response of like, well, why did it happen? What was the backstage stuff mm-hmm. that, that happened mm-hmm. to this, you know? Uh, or like I, I, a lot of people made reference to uh, like, we should like take like the Shane Douglas throwing the NWA title down during the ECW <laughs> day. And I'm like, guys, it's not that serious. Like it really isn't like, I don't know. I think, and, and it just made me wonder, I was like, fans really kind of like, they wanted some kind of drama out of it. And it's like, and even like, uh, uh, 
uh, someone tweeted uh, Bruce Tharp, who's the president of the NWA, about it, and he was just like, you know, we went in different directions. We support Inspire Pro, you know, and it's like there's not, it's not a big deal. It's a thing, but I, I don't know if there's a case of, and I don't know if this is just an indie wrestling topic or a, a wrestling topic in general, mm-hmm. but I don't know. There's that weird. I I I'm always in between my opinion of. Well, the fan doesn't want to know what's behind the curtain. And I think in some cases, sometimes they do, which is kind of an odd, you know, uh, an odd circumstance. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I never know what to think in, the, in that case. So so I, I, I think I know I, I think I understand what you're uh, so. So let's take this context. Let's break this context down a little bit. Let's think about wrestling mayhem show. What did we just do here for the last two hours before this show? (laughs) Right. We were talking and speculating. Like we have the guys coming on and saying, um, uh, I'm trying to put out one of the statements that that is that that makes sense. When when we make a statement of I don't understand why they do this or they must be doing this because this I can't see TNA doing anything but this right like that's right. us formulating in our heads like Dixie Car- Dixie Carter must be the problem with TNA right uh, Vince must be the problem with WWE. We think from the tidbits we've been given be it be these awesome new podcasts that we get on on WWE network or whatnot we fill in the blanks and a lot of times just just create our own narratives right uh yeah. like anything else like any anybody anything else there's drama backstage so this person's leaving days of our lives uh, guys it's a big it's a it's a soap opera it's so that that yeah anyways exactly but but I think I think the pro- the thing is you, we forget I don't know if it's because we're involved to the point we are but people are looking at Inspire Pro IWC RWA whatever much in the same vein they do a WWE yes it's a smaller thing yeah and yes maybe so and so has access and talked to so and so at a Denny's and thinks this happened because of this comment like like it's what it is it seriously is. I, I I completely agree with you because I've noticed that entirely. I think people I, – I, there's either a – and it happens with devout indie wrestling fans too. It's not just like the casual wrestling fan no. that comes to a show. I think they we, act, we, like, we all – like, Why is this not WWE? And, and, and it's like, guys, we don't have that kind of money. You know, right, right, right. So so I think I think like even like, like you know, uh, you as a person in wrestling needs to sit back. It's like, wait, how complicated is it at my show for X, Y, and Z to happen? How complicated has it to be for that to happen on Raw, right? Uh, and, yeah. And, and so I think that that little bit of insight, you know, forget like, well, or, or vice versa. Well, it's easy for us to make movements really quick and make this thing happen. Uh, or, or, or it's easy for me to do this thing with my camera at the show when I'm on a production side. It's easy for me to do this on commentary and work with Lance Hoyt at ringside or something like that. That's how yeah. many other bells and whistles are being pulled in order for the littlest thing to happen. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what was the one thing recently where they were, we were there was some behind the scenes. I think it was a, a, one of those WWE uh, 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 24 specials that they did and they uh-huh. were going over the entrances and looking at the mind. Oh, the uh, uh, ESPN 30 on ESPN 30 on, 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 on NXT because they were you show like they were like, walk in here, do this, do this. Like it's a full on production. There's rehearsals for these things. Yeah. They took them all day to make Seamus stand in that point. So he's under the spotlight. So he yells at the right point. You know what I mean? Like that, there, there's so many, you know. That's not happening on the indies, guys. But yeah, that's not happening on the indies, but bringing it down, you know, we still think that's this. It's still wrestling. We, you know, everybody knows Kayfabe is dead, but they still want to believe the drama behind the curtain is real to a certain extent. And yeah. again, that extends to indie wrestling because you got to think for these fans reacting to you, to them, Inspire Wrestling is the shit. You know what I mean? Like, they're fans. They're fans. They want to know. I see the same thing with, honestly, podcasting. Honestly, true, yeah. honestly, social media. Um, I, I, There are interesting things in these little circles of, of, of social media and bloggers and stuff are the exact same thing as what you're experiencing with an Inspire Pro or an IWC or something. That that speculation and drama and this thing. Do you hear about so and so going to doing this and this? You know, I think I, I heard I heard it tonight at social media day. Yeah. You know, not to put down the person who told me or anything like that, but you know, this but that's the talk that still happens. 
And it's such a confliction. I don't know about on your end, but I know it's very much a confliction on my end sometimes where I want to be like, I wish the people would know an aspect of what goes on in the back because they would know how much work it takes the work. and they would be a little less, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. critical. In it. But, not, but it I doesn't even, not, you it know. doesn't even happen just the fan base. I mean, we talk about a certain uh, place where some people go anonymously to talk about things. And, and yeah. supposedly most of those people are wrestlers and the wrestlers yeah. are just as speculative. It seems uh, in, in that, case at least uh, or you know I, I don't understand why a booker man's not doing this you know uh, i mean the booker man's got I a think... lot of a sh- lot of stuff going on to book the thing and promote the thing and has whatever other stresses you know and and, and, and even i hear it from promotion to promotion you know why oh, i hear they're doing this over here i'm like well i'm there and they're not you know uh you know right. that, that everybody wants to fill in the narrative of where they're not behind the closed doors you know i, I mean it's just I never... like it, 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 oh, sorry it's just like um, uh, me working with a client, I'm like, like there was a there was a period where I was working with somebody who was a good friend and coworker and colleague, but I hadn't actually been on a phone call or met him in person in like three months. But we were exchanging emails back and forth and doing well. Nothing was wrong, but in my head, I created this narrative of that email sound kind of short. Oh, I wonder the problem. I wonder if they're going to cancel the show. <laughs> oh no! You know, I mean that. that it so just, you think it's all? Do you think it's all just, just our self consciousness? It is. It like, is self conscious, yeah. filling in the blanks, our own storytelling in our heads, and 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 the pro wrestling already has that little bit of unbelievability, or what are we supposed to believe to begin with? And and I think that feeds that common part of us. At least us that are into these types of things and the drama, and because the drama is just as entertaining as what happens in the ring in a lot of cases, or at least yeah. the believed drama, right? How many dirt sheets if you're in the feeling backstage is this? Feeling backstage is Vince isn't too hot on Cesaro because his knees look funny, you know? I mean, you know, and then, then everybody <laughs> believes that, and then everybody's <laughs> and then everybody's quoting that at the next pay per view when he drops with John Cena. Do you think? Do you think in the case of indie wrestling, do you think social media kind of aids in that? In the case that. In at least for a certain degree in WWE, their indie rest, their, their social media when it comes to their wrestlers is moderated. In a you need to like they have so they you know it's documented they've had you know taught people about this is how you should use your Twitter. This right, is you know right. how you should do this. And any company um, should any any, any company should any company should be having that conversation if they want their people on social media. I I, I know I want I want to bring up because this actually really fits in um, uh, beyond wrestling recently. Um, they had a. They were very public about uh, the fact that there was. They had an upcoming event, and um, basically the the case was the people that they work with to sort of get their flights and to like sort of help with costs and stuff like that. Um, you know, and they and it's the same group that kind of works with PWG and stuff like that. They had a long post about how they kind of got fucked over by this guy. So there's a good chance there's a bunch of re- like bunch of like high level wrestlers that may not be on their upcoming show, and it was basically a call to hey, uh, either th- either this happens, I'm gonna try to take out a chunk of money, and we're probably gonna be very you know in the in the in the weeds or whatever. Um, so we're holding a sale to basically raise money for this, they, and apparently they raised gr- a great deal of money to cover everything. But I, I, I personally don't feel this way, but I feel like a lot of people would be like, you're opening the curtain too far. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that you're telling people, hey, this is how we get our flights, this is how the, this is how the business works. Um, and I don't feel that way. No, I feel that, no, no. I, I, I know, think I think if you understand how prohibitive it is for, and I don't know the numbers, I don't know how, what this actually is, but if you know how prohibitive it is to get Tommy Dreamer on an IWC show this year, or yeah. even Ric Flair, holy crap, and, and how those numbers work out. I mean, you, I, I hear once in a while, well, we got this because so-and-so is also doing this show and they help share the flight, you know, I mean, or something like that. I mean, that yeah. that is... I, <laughs> depends on where you're listening i think most people understand there's something like that i mean there's fans that just go and there's a show and holy crap they got to dreamer this must be a big deal and they don't know and they don't know you know or they don't care for example for example some fans may notice that if there's a big name coming to inspire pro wrestling on a certain show and they are appearing on another show in texas that weekend there's a reason for that 
because we've worked out a deal to where you know exactly we, and, and this that happens here too ray Rowe, yeah. i believe was on friday night aiw up in cleveland here in pittsburgh for uh for a super indie and he was up at five star in uh, uh north of town uh, on sunday i mean yeah. he came guys he came from texas right <laughs> you don't just do that for super indie i know it's super indie but nobody can afford that I know probably people are thinking like, oh, it's a flight. Like, yeah, it's a flight and they're very expensive. And when you're mm-hmm. in the case of Super Indie, for example, when you have multiple guys that are like big names that are flying. It's like, two two know, Ring of Honors, two PWGs. I don't know where the hell yeah. they came from. I don't, PO, you got to think, PWG, how much, it has got to be so cost prohibitive to be in California as a wrestling promotion. Yeah. Because what have you ever seen a map of California – Nobody lives local, period. Okay, <laughs> it's not like the north. The north, either the northeast thrives up here, is because we have so many cities within two hours, three hours of each other. And PWG is such a rarity. Oh yeah, you know, PWG brings in all these amazing talents, but you know that's not the case in everywhere in California, though. Mm-mm. You know, you have Mm-mm. your local, you have your talents with a lot of local, com- uh, local wrestlers. They're yeah. from, they're actually from the like area. the people from the fifty mile radius. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I think it's a rarity that you have. You know, I you know, you know, IWC here. We got people coming from uh, as far away as Toronto, right? Uh, for for a while, they're on a regular basis. And I mean, there was, and also you kind of see. And we talked about it in this recent weeks. Like, hey, notice that like like this person, this person, and this person are always on the same shows. And and when yeah. some, somebody's not there, you notice like like the three or four other people aren't there on the show for some reason too. Like, there's yeah. a reason for that. That's that's kind of the math of things. So that's when I and, and I love I love wrestling fans. I'm not going to degrade any wrestling fans, but when people are like, why aren't you bringing in this person? It's like. You want to pay for their flight? <laughs> we're, you, we'll be more than no, happy no, and that's not a, if, and I don't think that's a, and I don't think that's a, that's an adequate response either. Like it was like, it was no, like, absolutely like, not. Are you crazy? You don't understand the business. Like, no, they're not. They're yeah. a fan. They're not supposed to. And, and God bless yeah, them that they don't want to. Okay, I mean, yeah. we, we're, what is wrong with us? As, as, as wrestling fans, what the hell are we doing that we found ourselves here doing this because we're doing all these other things? You know, there's like I, I, I often say, and and I don't know if our guests could could support this as well, but I often think if you're somebody who um, becomes a wrestler or involved highly in the wrestling business um, or becomes uh, successful in certain aspects or becomes a comedian of all things um, you're pretty much damaged in some way and 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 and, and, and the, the common sense button is off and says no I'm going to do this and that's what happens and that's why people become successful because they don't take no for an answer and they keep going and and hopefully have a very supportive uh, 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 spouse in, in, in that case as well um so you know i mean that that it's okay to be a fan and it's okay for these guys to be fans and and i don't want to put down fans and i I hate when the wrestlers do that because it's like guys guys, this is the guy that's these are the people paying for you being here you know these are the people paying for you know whatever it is for an indie wrestler or whatever or even if you're on bigger yeah, and, and think whatever you want. There's a difference between thinking it and vocalizing it, though. Exactly. And that's the part that costs people. I, and the, the, uh, okay, they don't okay, take okay. I mean, I mean just, just within reason, you know. But but yeah. you're always going to have different people of different reasoning levels. Again, very psychological here, I guess. Um, it's, it's just clients I've been hanging out with. Um, you have different, you have to accept those and you have to be tactful with it and, and, and understanding and not say, um, 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 F you if you didn't like my pay per view, <laughs> for instance, <laughs> uh, which is a, a big company problem that somebody had happen just recently. So, recently, yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but, but again, I, I, that's that's I mean, that goes back to the old social media thing as well and just reacting to bad reactions. I mean, guys, you got yeah, you, you, I know it gets it, it gets tedious, but you're gonna get bad responses, you know what I mean, no matter what, yeah. I mean, we're we're starting to see weird crap like that because we're getting to that level with these podcasts where they come out of the word work and like, well, that was an interesting comment. Like, you shut up, you're fat, don't know anything. Like, okay, 
Well, thank you for the uh, thank you. I, like, and I respond. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's it's learning how to differentiate. Right, right. Uh, the just that, just hate or whatever from like actual like criticism. Right. You know, and you know, you it's it's a you have to find a happy medium. Right. 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 In, in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, belong beyond the gamer gate, and that's a whole other kind of thing. Yeah, um, but yeah, you know, the whole um, uh, what was I watching? Where it was, it was talking about how um, hey, it's a really bad time to be a woman on the internet. So I feel bad for the, oh, the wrestlers terrible. out there. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, us white guys, got it easy right now doing a podcast about pro wrestling. Oh but, yeah. Jeez. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that, went, that went weird. That went a little weird. That's what happens because we do a show here and it's uh, a near midnight my time. And that, that's uh, why we have Tonio on the main show. We just switch it up a little bit. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, with that, I, I I don't know if any indie wrestling going. It's a Fourth of July weekend. I don't know if anybody really big is running uh, uh, uh going on. I don't know. Nobody on my radar. That I'm no aware one, of. No one this weekend. I, I know I'll have a couple that I'll be able to mention next weekend um, that, that I think people should know about. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, um, there's. I think there's a couple. I mean, there's a, there's any wrestling every freaking mm-hmm. weekend, uh, but right. somewhere. I do have a yeah. question. If I can crowdsource this a little bit, I, I'm looking. I, you know, full disclosure, I'm, I'm I am actually looking for uh, decent websites. Uh, you know, websites with the following. You know, they're willing to. Um, I have I you know, we do productions around here and maybe you're interested in this too, Eamon. I you're not the mm. guy that does this part, I'm sure. Um, but I'm wondering personally and professionally, what are you guys that check out indie wrestling? Where are you going to find out about indie wrestling? Are there people doing show reviews? Me personally, I want to reach out to some people and actually put out some of these shows we've been doing with uh, with, with the local promotions and 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 get reviews and get the word out there a bit more. Uh, Amy, I talked mm-hmm. to you about about part of this concept uh, offer as well. Uh, but um, but but definitely looking to reach out more and just just get a little more buzz around things and, and figuring out the best way possible. And this is one of the um, and there's other things we're trying too uh, that I'm hoping to work on. If you listen to some of my other shows, I've talked about some of those things I'm going to be trying very soon with a certain relaunch that's happening uh, once we get that off the ground as well. Um, but uh, but no, ser- seriously, what resources are you going to? Are there any good indie wrestling devoted sites, parts of sites? Like, I don't know if there's a co- dark corner of WrestleZone that deals with this kind of stuff. You know, uh, I, know a personal, I know a personal one for mine that does a really great job, in my opinion, is uh, PWPonderings.com. Right, right, right. Uh, right. They, they devote a lot of it to indie wrestling, and, and it's really well thought out. And it doesn't just cover, like, the big groups, which right. I like. And, and like even like part of it's my fault because I know we had a great contact. I think it might have been with PW actually um, that used to do IWC. And and for whatever reason, I fell out of sand. And, and this is completely my fault. It is one of those things where it, it falls by the wayside because it's one of the million things that you're doing. But I want to get that established again. And, and I'm like, yeah, please check out our product. I love some feedback, sharing it, etc. And 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 that's content for other sites as well. So um, that's one thing. I mean, it's one thing to get it, it out there. You know, be like. Put it in front of people, you know, and 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 see 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 what, what's going on. So, anyways, again, we have some other ideas, uh, some interesting uses of YouTube and social media and, and everything. I have actually straight up said, hey, for this site, this is something we're going to do on Instagram. If you if you uh, look through some of the Instagram video and Twitter video posts on on basic sorgonomics at sorgatron.com, um, I, I often dive into social media and wrestling. Uh, with that and and if you are a wrestler or a promotion or something and and, and trying to figure out what to do um there's a uh, hope i'm instilling a little bit of tips you know maybe give you guys some ideas um you know we mentioned i mentioned off air andrew palace uh, is a big, we had a we had a conversation with him about social media and uh he's trying some new things lately and and, and i hope it works out for him so and uh yeah I don't know where I'm going with that. It's getting late. Uh, no, but, absolutely. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely send us. Amen. And honestly, if you're looking at what to do with social media and pro wrestling, look at what I think IWC is kicking butt on the Instagram right now. Uh, Amen, I know you have been doing the Inspire Pro one. You guys have been doing a great job. Obviously, you guys are freaking on fire, not just in the ring, but I think the whole air surrounding Inspire Pro Wrestling from a distance looks like Thank it's you. very, very exciting down there. Um, and, and, I, and I hope... I can only hope that we we like that our guys up here are are, are equally as exciting. Uh, oh, absolutely! I 
IWC in particular, I think does a really amazing job of like just being out there on social media. It is, it is honestly so important and people don't, there were some places that just don't take it into account and mm-hmm. it is, they, it is, it is a massively important aspect when it comes to the whole package of a wrestling company. This is the new flyering town, guys. Don't get yeah. those trainees just to flyer town and pass out cards at the local WWE show when it comes to town. Uh, get them to tweet about it. Mm-hmm. There's an untapped resource right there. Um, ask your trainees, are you on Snapchat? Are you on this? Are you on this? Are you on this? Talk about us. Hell, have them talk about being a freaking trainee to a point, too. I don't know what rule that's breaking. Somebody will tell me at the next <laughs> show I go to, I'm sure. But anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, that's enough of our rantings and ramblings. Check us out at Aim and 2, please. And, of course, wrestling, uh, InspireProWrestling.com. Um, and all, all the all tweets and stuff, whatever your your deal is out there. I'm at uh, SorgatronMedia.com. You can get all the stuff there. MikeSorg.com and link to my social medias. All my things, stuff, wrestling and non. WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this and other shows. And you can subscribe uh, on the audio and video format. So you don't miss an episode of this or every episode that we do uh, in the Wrestling Mayhem Show Network. Uh, or even Sorgatron Media Master Feed to get everything that probably has my voice on it. The soothing tones. I'm sure somebody out there is just, tones. Just sick of my, like, I want the video game podcast, but man, I don't want to just listen to that sword guy again. Um, 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 uh, I, that's a whole Screw that thing. comment. <laughs> that wasn't a uh, comment. That's actually a thought I had about another network of multiple shows oh, by the same terrible. host that I've had. You know, I just like, I like this guy, but I've hear too, I hear eight hours of him a week. It's too much. You know, uh, anybody. Eight hours isn't enough. <laughs> How much content do we <laughs> yeah. make around here? How much content do we make around here? Um, um, oh, WrestlingMamShow.com and in good times at WrestlingMamShow.com if you want to drop us a line on that as well. At Show on the Twitters. And please just support indie wrestling, guys. We'll see you next Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Made up for the taste of the poor. Huh? Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>